Yes, so 9-11 as a seminal event. I want to argue that we could understand international relations and the world since the Cold War as being divided. And in the 90s, that maybe we had a certain set of expectations and understandings. Broadly, we saw in the 90s that progress was possible. We had a sort of positive view that the end of the Cold War would release uh, progressive potential to resolve problems that we couldn't resolve before. And somehow, in the zeros, after the end of the 90s, we don't really have a view about progress and about resolving problems. And in fact, rather than the world going forwards, it seems that all our discourses and our concerns are ones of limits. And I think that's a fundamental break. And however we might want to dress it up in terms of liberal disciplines of international relations and how they might change, it's undeniable that in the 90s we had a set of liberal discourses about progress that shaped our understanding of the fundamental issues of international relations. When he talked about development, we saw that in a material way in terms of progress, modernization, industrialization, some teleological view of the way the world was going. When we talked about security in the 90s, we also talked about a world that could be made more secure, that the growth, the development of ways of achieving international security with the end of the Russian, American, capitalist, Soviet nuclear Armageddon. We thought we were going to have a more secure world. And when we talked about discourses of democracy and of human rights, again, we thought that there would be progress and potential for humanity. I want to suggest that in the zeros, in the decade after 9-11, that those discourses, those themes, are no longer about progress. They're all about limits. That when we talk about development, we talk about the need to put limits on development. We learned, apparently, from 9-11, that things we thought were good, things that developed our societies, actually exposed us to the threat of terrorists. Whether it's the Twin Towers, or whether it's our technology, it's our hydroelectric dams, all of these became vulnerabilities when we, thought, when we talk about threats to our strategic infrastructure. All the science, all the technology, all the things that we aspired to that we thought were good, now become our vulnerabilities. We learn that development, that science and rationality cannot really do the things we imagined that they could do. And in fact, even worse, we learn that they create new problems and compl complex problems. They create a world that becomes more difficult for us to think about progress, to think about security. And in terms of discourses of security, I don't think we any longer talk about how we've moved from the balance of power, the insecurities of the world of international relations to a more securing global sphere. As far as I've, I've, I can see it, when we talk about global, we talk about global insecurities. We talk about cultures of fear. We talk about risk society. And I think that 9-11 somehow, uh, in different ways, makes us think that security is no longer even a possibility. For those of us who are trained in a liberal, polit political, philosophical background, we know the basis of the social contract, the setting up of a state, was about security, about escaping the state of nature. Without that, there was no legitimacy for a framework of sovereignty. After 9-11, the only thing that governments ever tell us is that that's not their job, that they can't secure us. That it, in terms of the war on terror, in terms of other problems, of natural disasters, etc., the argument is always, it's not a matter of if, but when. And now, in terms of security, it's our jobs to make ourselves more resilient, to reflect upon how we work as individuals and, in, and within communities. And essentially, what we increasingly learn is that it's hubristic to think we can secure ourselves in a globalised, complex an uncertain world. And even in terms of democracy and human rights, we no longer talk about how people are liberated through self-government, about the potentials of public reason that we realise in the democratic sphere. Even saying the words like that would seem a little bit ridiculous today. 
Uh, nowadays, we talk about does democracy and human rights work as a limit? Do they work as a limit to government? Do they work as a limit to sovereignty? Now, all I'm suggesting is that somehow around 9-11, or how we imagine it, a lot of things about what we thought about our world as a liberal world and the issues that are probably closest to our hearts, we changed the ways in which we understood those things. And the world seemed to be going, as I've said, not in a way of progress, which we could still contest and dispute, but the discussions were more about limits. Now, if it is right that 9-11, the seminal event, changed that world, turned all our liberal discourses and inverted them into opposite meanings, that's a sort of an amazing thing. And um, I don't know, if you think about Churchill's Battle of Britain speech about never has so much been achieved by so few, I don't think we need to look at it just in terms of the few individuals who did the suicide planes, but I think never has so much been achieved by so few in terms of three numbers. The three numbers of 9-11 where we, I think, refuse to engage in the transformations of the discourses of our discipline of international relations, and rather than reflecting on how we've changed towards an understanding of limits, we say, oh, it's 9-11, and we use 9-11 as a way of evading discussion. We use it as a way of evading understanding. And I think 9-11 goes in the lexicon of IR words that we shouldn't really use. I think it goes along with globalization because it's another one of those magic words that just sort of happened and it indicates as well that our world should just change and our social sciences and our disciplines should just change because in a globalized world or in a 9-11 world, it's not quite so open to instrumentality, to strategy, to rationality, to ideas of progress. And I think that um, we should get away from linking these transitions and these transformations with one isolated and arbitrary event.